Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in TLA 8 which is all about digital food prints and identity. This will be the first quarter topic week 2 and day 2 and this lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to. First is to explain the concept of digital footprints, including the distinction between active and passive digital footprints. The second one is to propose ways the situation could have been handled better, applying their understanding of digital etiquette, rights and responsibilities, security and reputation management. And the third one is to recognize the importance of thinking before posting, using privacy setting, and engaging in clear communication to protect their digital identity. For the explicitation, so let us define what is a digital footprint. A digital footprint is a trail of data that individuals leave behind when they use the internet. This includes all the information that is shared both intentionally and unintentionally through various online activities such as social media interactions, website visits, emails, and online shopping. Digital footprints can be categorized into two types. First is the active digital footprints. So these are the data trails you leave intentionally such as posts on social media, blog entries, or any other content you actively upload or share online. The second type of digital footprint is the passive digital footprints. These are the data trails you leave unintentionally, so such as cookies that track your browsing habits, IP addresses, and other metadata collected by websites and online services. The following are the importance of digital footprints. So the first one is the privacy and security. So the data you leave behind can be used to build a profile about you which can be exploited for malicious purposes such as identity thief or targeted cyber attacks. The second one is reputation management. Your digital footprint can affect your reputation. Employers, colleges, and and other um, entities often search for online information about candidates and inappropriate content can have negative consequences. And the third one is personalization. So companies use digital footprints to personalize user experience such as recommending products or content based on browsing history. The following are the managing your digital footprints. So managing your digital footprint involves being mindful of the information you share online and taking steps to protect your privacy. So the first one is privacy settings. Regularly review and adjust the privacy settings on your social media accounts and other online services to control who can see your information. The second one is search yourself. Periodically search for your own name on search engines to see what information is publicly accessible. The third one is think before you post. So consider long-term impact of the content you share online. Once something is posted, it can be difficult to remove it completely. And the fourth one is use secure connections. Ensure that you are using secure HTTPS connection when browsing the internet to protect your data from being intercepted. 
So let us define what is digital identity. Digital identity it refers to the online persona that is created through your digital footprints. It encompasses all the information available about you online, including social media profiles, online transactions, and any other digital interactions. Your digital identity can influence how others perceive you and can have the real world World application. The following are the components of digital identity. So the first one is the personal information. This includes your name, date of birth, address, and other identifying details. The second one is the professional information. This includes your employment history, professional skills, and educational background, often found on platforms like LinkedIn. The third one is the social information. This includes your social media activity, such as posts, likes, comments, and the networks you are part of. And the fourth one is behavioral information. This includes your browsing habits, purchase history, and other online behaviors that can be tracked and analyzed. The following are the rest associated with digital identity. So the first one is identity thief. So cyber criminals can use your personal information to steal your identity and commit fraud. The second one is reputation damage. So negative information or inappropriate content associated with your digital identity can harm your personal and professional reputation. And the third one is data exploitation. Companies can exploit your digital identity for targeted advertising and other commercial purposes without your explicit consent. The following are protecting your digital identity. So the first one is strong password. So use strong unique passwords for different online accounts and change them regularly. The second one is two-factor authentication. Enable two-factor authentication for an added layer of security. The third one is be skeptical of phishing. So be cautious of emails, messages, or websites that ask for personal information. And the fourth one is regular monitoring. So keep an eye on your online accounts for any suspicious activity. For the work example, guide the students through analyzing the scenario. Ask these questions. What impact did this have on the student's digital footprint and identity? How could the situation have been handled better? Sarah, a high school student, posted a photo of her Instagram account during a weekend party with friends. In the background of the photo, there are some students drinking from red cups, which are commonly associated with alcoholic beverages. Although the cups actually contain soda, Sarah captions the photo, Crazy night with the best people. So now let us analyze using the digital footprints and identity concepts. So the first one is the digital etiquette. So let us first identify the ignored element. Sarah did not consider the political implication of the photo and caption. Digital etiquette involves thinking about how your post might be perceived by others and the possible consequences. And for the improvement, Sarah should have have reviewed the photo more carefully and chosen a caption that accurately reflected the situation. She could have avoided using hashtag that implied reckless behavior. For the digital rights and responsibilities, so let us first uh, identify the ignored element. So while Sarah had the right to post the photo, she also had the responsibility to ensure that her post did not mislead or harm others. For the improvement, Sarah should have been more mindful on her responsibilities as a digital citizen, considering how her post might be interpreted by different audiences. 
And for the third one is the digital security. So for the ignored element, Sarah did not consider the privacy setting of her Instagram account. So the photo was publicly accessible, allowing anyone to view and share it. And for the improvement, Sarah could have been used a uh, privacy settings to limit the visibility of her post to close friends only, reducing the rest of uh, misunderstanding and wider spread. For the reputation management, so for the ignored element, Sarah did not think about how the photo might affect her reputation and the reputation of her friends. So for the improvement before posting, Sarah should have considered the long-term impact of the photo on her digital footprint and reputation. So how the situation could have been handled better? So letter A, think before posting. So Sarah should have been a moment to review the photo and caption, considering how they might be perceived by others. She could have chosen a different photo that did not include the red caps or use a caption that clearly indicated they are having a fun or responsible time. The second one is use privacy setting. So Sarah could have adjusted her privacy settings to ensure that only her close friends could see the post. And this uh, would have limited the spread and potential for misunderstandings. For the third one is clear communication. So if Sarah realized the misunderstanding early, she could have posted a follow-up clarification explaining that the cups contain soda and not alcohol. And the last one is to seek support. So when the situation escalated, Sarah could have sought support from the trusted teacher or counselor to help address the rumors and misunderstandings. Thank you.